Ladies and gentlemen, you know, yesterday I told you that uh, today we are going to have a very powerful analysis on the economic status of our country. And actually, here I am, <laughs> perfectly prepared for it. But even before I start, I want to make a premonition. And this premonition is going to stand the test of time in the event that, you know, one of the factors underpinning it is not right. And this is the premonition that in the event William Samuel Ruto, who is the president, fails to accommodate the opposition, or what we are seeing now in the offing, fails to make a handshake with Rail Odinga, then definitely we are going to have a failed government. You know, we are going to have a failed state. In fact, today I was listening to David D, you know, the, 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 the key economic advisor to the government, Ruto specifically, and he was saying something which is very important. And I kind of agreed with his perspective. So he was saying that, you know, he was kind of trying to bring in the, the realm where the government is trying to defend itself within the economic of framework or the setup. And he was saying that the government is looking forward to have a stable economy but in its reality if the government will not find a way of managing the dynasties <laughs> then definitely we are not going to be stable in the long run so in it in a in an interpretation actually in its interpretation what that definitely means is that there is a realization that William Ruto is coming to terms with right now that there is that system which runs the government and the country, the economy. There is that what we used to say, the deep state. You know, he can't run away from it. He can't run away from those factors which have so much immense influence in the manner in which government operates. And so David D was trying to say that if the dynasties are not managed well, then definitely dynasties will continue peddling economic instability through the political factors. So meaning the dynasties will not be happy with the government, but instead will be using the political tool to destabilize the government. And when the government is destabilized, definitely the economy collapses. So for, for, for them to have a solution, a way out for them is definitely to go for a handshake and so I agree with that totally. And that actually f formed the basis of what I want to inform you right now. So I want us to look at what if Ruto fails to make a handshake with Rail Odinga. Definitely we are going to have a failed system of governance and a failed state. And when we have a failed state, you know, the government loses the control of the nation. And when the control of the nation is lost, definitely the, 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 the nation is subjected to various things number one we have political unrest so political unrest is what we are seeing like the intense mandamanos the intense chaotic situations where you you know rebel groups and 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 and, and very many um uh, civil group or, or let's just say armed groups are ganging up against the government so they they are left to their own devices or if the government is trying to contain them the government cannot manage them they take to the streets uh, you know they destabilize everything so the political unrest that comes with it would be to a bigger extent where you know if can you just imagine a situation where you know Raila declares mandamano every day of the week you know that will be very much disastrous and so if we have a failed state and we, we we reach a point where the government has lost the control of the territory of the nation and we have a failed state in its sense definitely i, I think it, it will be so us then the other thing that will happen if ruto does not go into handshake with Raila Odinga is the ineffectiveness of the government and this ineffectiveness of the government will generally come as a result of you know operations uh, you know crippled in its end. The, the, there is nothing that can be said to, 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 to form a goodwill of the nation. For instance you know I've realized that William Ruto is keenly 
um, following the footprints of President Uru Kenyatta. What President Uru Kenyatta did in his first term and, and, and a bit of his second term after the handshake, you know, creating the international network or going outside there to sell the nation. You know, th that actually earned him a good status and, you know, the reputation that he built for Kenya was so immense. And I'm seeing William Ruto trying to bank on that. And, and when you talk of ineffectiveness of the government as a result of a failed state, if Kenya goes to that extent and becomes a failed state, then definitely, you know, everything that Ruto is trying to make, every effort that Ruto is trying to make based on what he is looking for to get from the international platform or the connection he's trying to create, the relationship is trying to uh, create with the the foreigners, you know, they, they, they will be in futility. They will be kind of done in vain. And so for William Ruto to really avoid this or rescue everything that would be negatively detrimental, there is option of having a handshake. And so for William Ruto to fail in the first term <laughs> is, is, is very close to impossible because he is looking forward to re-election. So if he is looking forward to re-election, and imagine a scenario where he fails in the first term, in the next two to three years. Do you think he can uh, contain that? He cannot contain that. So the only option for him that he has is to make sure that by all means, at all costs, he plays his card so well to the extent that he gets into a handshake with Raila or just come to terms with Raila to the extent that there is no going to be, you know, instances of uh, political unrest and ineffectiveness of the government, which are within the, the, the framework of a failed state. You know, yesterday, um, when the news actually uh, came out that, you know, the government has no money, and, and the National tre Treasury is really, really delaying the payment. The, the counties, everybody is crying. You know, the civil servants are crying. You know, it, it is a strategy uh, that the government used today to send David Ndi to kind of go and maybe speak one, two, three. But David Ndi, in his senses, as, as a man who understands the economy, you know, there are, there are some things which he was speaking and... I really believe that he was really saying the truth. For the first time, actually, I was trying to follow what he was saying. He was kind of saying the truth. And, you know, when the truth can actually come as early as now, then it tells you then that things are very serious. In, in, in the kitchen of the government, things are very serious. They cannot lie anymore. They cannot just come and sugarcoat things. Because if you want to come and sugarcoat things, you know, information has reached the people. So they only come to say, this is exactly what needs to be done. And within the, the, the weights that they have in the category of people uh, that William Ruto fronted as the advisors, definitely they must know that they are talking to people who are enlightened, people who are bright, people who understand what is happening, people who are seeing and hearing. So there's no way they, they can actually come and try to, you know, cheat people. So it is true that the only option to make our country not be plunged into, you know, a failed system of governance or a failed state is for William Ruto to go for a handshake with Raila Odinga or generally manage this talk so well to the extent that they agree on a common thing that would ensure peace and will ensure economic stability at the end of the time that they kind of play their politics so well to manage the opposition. So for now, there is something that I mentioned some, some time back, actually when I was starting this channel, there's a video that I did and I was telling you that, you know, a government that comes into power uh, is not expected to deliver from day one unless it is a government that um, is, is a continuation of the same ideology. <laughs> like, for example, in the case of if we were to talk of Raila won, you know, Raila would have continued with exactly what President Ru was doing. But this is a government that changed the tables, turned the tables, came with 
you know everything new you know they wanted to showcase what they really had you know it, it is a total turnaround and so for the time frame that they will need for them to align themselves in the first place they must take time and i project that the cost of living will be actually managed in the very last time frame of the first term of President William Ruto. And that is actually the strategy that they always use when we are nearing, for example, let's say uh, 2025, 2026, okay, where, you know, serious political games shall be seen and very serious people shall be moving around to shape them for the 2027. That is the time they will come up with a strategies to lower the you know, the prices of, of, of commodities, the cost of living, just to get them into 2020, uh, 2027. Look at what happened in 2017. You remember that time when um, uh, Wunga tried to increase, <laughs> you know, but when we were, I don't know, three months uh, before the election, you know, the government immediately, strategically and drastically um, uh, subsidized the the, the the maize flower and even went ahead and indicated uh, branded every maize flower being sold the two kgs 90 g okay by government of kenya so it tells you it is a strategy there is everything that can be done right now but this is a politic this is a political government a political government must always first of all try to satisfy their interest and then they look at people when they will need the people and the time they will need the people is when they want to vote. So for now, the strategy is to make sure that the game that is being played, every resources that are being used, you know, are used to contain the opposition and to make sure that the deep state is compact and is in place to work with the government. Otherwise, if you go against the deep state, then definitely you are as good as dead. And that is why some people say, <laughs> dead on arrival. What do you have, ladies and gentlemen? What do you have from my side? Let's have um, another video next time. May you have a great time.